Hi everyone, this is Eliar Games, and today I'm going to watch all of all the Chino's character teas, well, character trailers in general, all the both the teaser, or all of the teaser demo and uh, miscellany, which I don't know if I want to do the miscellany, but she's pretty important. So Danesliff will probably have some pretty interesting things to say about her. Um, so yeah, let's get started. I'm sorry, father. I was reckless. When I saw those emaciated patients, those poor children, the futile hope in their eyes. I've told you before, recklessness always leads to failure. But it was not wholly in vain. I shall settle the rest. Like even when she seems she's being like caring, she still has like a really cold and unfeeling ah, air about her. Fools. Like she's looking down on you and thinking you're pitiful. Huh? But not actually pitying you. <laughs> oh well, somebody's getting their wish here. They want to trade places with that guy, I'm pretty sure. Even that part, I'm sure. <laughs> Father, your face. Fremene, we can take in a few more homeless children next year. Is she I actually showing emotion here and we're not going to see funds. it? Oh. Or is it just okay. full of blood or something? Mission accomplished. Yeah, it was just bloody. You can sleep now. Thank you. Again, she seems like Once she cares better, about her I'll family, but mission. she does it in a really, like she just doesn't have emotion. She's just going by what she thinks is right or wrong. And she's like following those protocols. Like maybe she's a sociopath with morals or something. That, that's what it feels like. Those who parade their virtues often do the most evil. We are not like them. Rest in peace, Snajevna. My child. Also, clearly, she's like way older than she seems. That was like a... Yeah. I think she's been the father of that organization for a long time now. All right, on to her demo. Legend I expect a lot from this one. The long nights were the den of dangers untold. The children would huddle at home and light the hearth, awaiting the adult's return. This one sounds very quiet, actually. The way she just looks down is not until it sets appealing. Okay, now it's a bit too loud. So she's fighting enemies from Inazuma and Sumeru for some reason.
It's also hard to feel any sort of empathy for her considering that like even if she like cares about all of her children i'm doing this a lot with her <laughs> um she still sends them on missions so she's not that caring it's still like a child's like organization of child soldiers growing up and doing her bidding but with the guise of being a family still its flame is no longer needed for you have the strength to defend yourselves that i mean it was edited well i guess but i've realized that there's nothing i've been excited for this past couple of well almost this entire time Interesting. I imagine there's going to be a character that I want soon. But so far, <laughs> Genshin is letting me save. Uh, all right, let's see her um, miscellany. What do you have to say about her, Dane? The fourth of the Fatui Harbingers. A formidable Snezhnaya She's pretty high up, actually. ...and a ruthless assassin. This is the most you can hope to glean about Arlecchino, if you know the right people to ask. But if you go one step further and gain the acceptance of a certain group of children, you'll learn about her most important identity of all, a father. This will be a productive partnership, I hope. As an intelligence operative, Arlecchino prefers more covert means of attack. But don't expect her to shy away her from unleashing her rage and chair is worse than Farina's. If the situation calls for it. Farina Arlecchino's does it better. normal attack can combo up to six spear strikes, dealing physical damage to enemies. It is cool to have a, a the scythe, though. Consumes a fixed amount of stamina like, at best, she's an cool. And deliver a single slash. Continue holding the attack I also like that she has pants. I wish Farina had pants for a short period, instead of shorts. Shorts never look good on stand. anyone. With her elemental skill, Arlecchino commands Bale Moon Bloodfire to deal pyro damage to nearby enemies. She then charges at one of them and delivers a further slash, dealing AoE pyro damage. Enemies struck by her elemental skill will receive her abilities a don't even look like pyro. Period. Blood debt directive. Yeah, it looks more like just blood. Of pyro damage <laughs> like blood magic. The damage dealt is considered elemental skill damage. Using her charged attack or elemental burst. There's like a tiny bit of fire mixed in sometimes. Nearby blood debt directives. Each directive absorbed grants her a bond of life worth a percentage of her max HP. There is a limit to the total bond of life that can be gained in this way. If her elemental skill is used again within a certain time, the directive's duration is recalculated, as is the maximum bond of life that they can confirm. The Crimson Moon bloodline etched into Arlecchino's life brings Crimson her Moon bloodline. But also power. When her bond of life is greater than or equal to a certain percentage of her HP, she enters the Mask of the Red Death State, converting her normal, charged, and plunging attack damage into pyro damage that cannot be overridden. While in this state, when Arlecchino's normal attack hits an enemy, the damage dealt is increased by an amount based on her attack and her current bond of life percentage. A portion of her bond of life is then consumed. Consuming bond of life in this way shortens the cooldown of her elemental skill, all is ash. After unlocking the talent, Agony alone may be repaid. When Arlecchino's elemental skill applies a blood debt directive to an enemy, it is upgraded after a period of time to blood debt dew, which grants her more bond of life when absorbed. Additionally, defeating enemies with blood debt directives will grant her a large amount of bond of life. There is a limit to the total bond of life that can be gained in this way. 
This is where you fall. I also I have to say I don't like her um elemental burst, her elemental burst. It's doing something that I actually really dislike about uh, Honkai Star Rail where her HP you, based on her attack and her it kind of transports back. you to another dimension or something or like you're in a different place Due it's always the same place talent, the it doesn't integrate itself know. into the well, uh, the current location like elemental bursts and usually do like nikita summons a um, a temple but it's like when the temple is in the surrounding area. Hers were like in some sort of like weird dimension thing, which I I don't like at all. It just seems like a cutscene rather than like an actual she is a father, like ability, you know, exists, thanks to her. an ability that she's the using in the world. Almost like what happens in magical girl shows and they, like. Based on the amount of attack, have to watch the entire transformation, amount. and like you're like in some sort of there other uh, dimension during that time. The seat of fourth harbinger, like, why is she taking you to another dimension just to use whatever that? And like, of it, it's weird. I, I don't like it. With mastery of the bond of life, the bloodthirsty flame she wields is a foreboding sight to her foes. She don't get me wrong, it's impressively like animated, but I don't like the concept of it. At an opportune moment, she uses a charged attack to absorb the directives, gaining Bond of Life and entering the Mask of the Red Death State, in which she dishes out pyro damage with her enhanced normal attack. When energy is full, she uses her elemental burst to deal pyro damage to enemies, while healing herself and also clearing her elemental skill cooldown. Then she goes on a final offensive streak, turning her foes to ash by the searing light of the blood red moon. Neither a dark sun nor a red moon is seen as a good omen by this world's standards. Things certainly did not end well for the dynasties that took them as their respective emblems. So when someone has a recurring dream featuring the sight of a crimson moon, she should beware. In my long journey, I have seen many fight to defy fate. Arlecchino is one of them. And she seems to have succeeded. The fiery blood that corrodes her flesh has eaten away, too, at the shackles that once bound her. Hmm, so maybe that has something to do with why we're going above, to fight her. Some see the face of death, maybe she can't control herself. Maybe that's why she seems so emotionless. Maybe she has to keep her like control herself that would be kind of interesting i mean but that would just be a repeat of like um shenha and <laughs> maybe she needs one of those ropes no but then it would be the same thing well whatever um yeah that was our latino our latino whatever skippable easily skippable um I do think her story quest, though, is going to be very interesting. It's probably going to reveal a lot because she's so central to the main story. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess we'll see. But that's it. Uh, that's it for Arlequino, and uh, hope you liked my reaction to her. That's it for now. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.